بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله uh, Today إن شاء الله we're going to take the tafsir of سورة عبسة from آية 33 till the end uh, just to remind myself and to remind you about the um, important points we mentioned about سورة عبسة uh that uh, uh the in the first um, in the first uh, 10 ayat uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, talking to his prophet alayhi salatu wasalam uh, about uh, that he's not paying much attention uh to the sahabi or the companion the, the blind companion the blind man uh, that came to him in order to know more and more about religion and the Prophet ﷺ was focused with the leaders of Mecca at that time and he wished them to enter uh, Islam because he knows والسلام, that if the leaders entered and embraced the Islam, the followers will uh, follow them and this is uh, will increase the number of the Muslims and will save them from the hellfire. So والسلام, was fully attentive with those people and at that point, point and at that time that this blind uh, man uh, uh, came to him from the companions and start asking him so he is uh, frowned at him as he was uh, want to spend the time with the leader so the, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talk uh, to his prophet in this ayat that you don't know uh, who is the one to will be uh, get benefits of your talk because maybe the one the companion that came to you he wants, he will get used and get benefits from those who are uh, taking your efforts and your time to inv to convince them. And they are arrogant. They are um, uh, not uh, yani interested uh, in, uh, he, in listening to you or in embracing this religion. Now my question to you, who knows the name of this blind companion? We mentioned his name. Who knows the name? Anyone who knows the name of the blind companion came to Prophet. The one who knows he can raise his or her hand, please. The name of the companion that came to the Prophet asking about his religion. Yes, Ya Inji or Heidi. Ibn Umm Maktoum. Excellent, excellent, mashallah. Yes, he was Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum. Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum. This is the name of the Sahabi that came to the Prophet. And um, after this, as we mentioned, after this event, that a Prophet every time he sees uh, Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum, he smiled. And he said, Came, come to me, the, the one that Allah blamed me because of you. Uh, and uh, yani, according to the seerah and the biography of the Prophet والسلام, he used to make him the leader of al Madina when the Prophet uh, leave al Madina for any battle or any ghazwa he made him the leader of al Madina until he come back so uh, then the ayat after uh, mentioning this story and of course, this story we learn from it that when you are making da'wah or inviting others to Islam or talking about the Islam, you have to be smart. You have to know who is the one who really benefit from your talk and who is the one who is just listening for listening. And you feel from your heart that he or she will not get benefit of what you're saying. So don't lose your time with such people. Because sometimes you are talking to people who are just want to pick up the faults in Islam and start to uh, ask you a question and then you answer and then start to ask another question. So the people who are asking all the time and uh, they usually they are not really want to get benefits. They want just to argue and make arguments. So in our way of da'wah or invitation others of Islam, we have to be very smart about that and to know who is really one interested to know and to uh, learn and who is just 
uh, will waste our time. Then the ayat uh, goes through the, uh, the different favors that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, bestowed on uh, the mankind uh, from his uh, food and uh, how the food is coming uh, from the rain that came into the soil and the soil from the soil, the growing plants and not even uh, vegetables for, and fruits for us as mankind, also for the, uh, the animals and the, uh, the, the uh, food, not only for us, only for the animals that we are. An'amakum, the word an'amakum, or there is a separate surah in Quran called Surah Al-An'am. The An'am means three types of animals. When you hear Al-An'am or listen to Al-An'am in Quran, it means three types of elements. The camels, the cows, and the sheep, and the goat, of course, with it. So the, the, the camels and the, the cows and the sheep, these are meant by Al-An'am. So they are types of animals that we are eating uh, their meat. This is Al-An'am. So Allah mentioned a lot of the favors on us, including not only food for us, uh, but from vegetables, I mean, or from plants, but also from animal source. And this is very important to have a balanced diet. When you hear this word, balanced diet, what does it mean? When you are eat, you have to eat from the plants, from the from vegetables, from fruits, and also meat or chicken. So you have to eat from the meat. The meat is very important because you may hear about people who call themselves vegetarians. Who are vegetarians? Vegetarians that they are eating only vegetables uh, or any plants, but in or and they are not eating anything of animal source, which is a very harmful type of diet because it deprives yourself from the importance of the uh, the different minerals and different things that are present in the meat, uh, like the iron, like um, uh, many important minerals that we need in our body from that we get it from uh, the meat the proteins different type of proteins iron and so on so our diet should be a balanced diet what means by balanced diet it must contain vegetables fruits and uh, meat or chicken this is very important and fish of course but i'm just um the meat especially because uh there is a widespread now ideas about to being vegetarian. Vegetarians uh, are suffering from many diseases and ha having many illness, including vitamins deficiency, vitamin B12 deficiency, vitamin B6 deficiency, because all these vitamins may be present in the meat. So they deprive themselves from an important source of vitamin. So take care about that. If you heard about vegetarian, this is not uh, a good type of meal your meal must be a balanced diet. Now we'll come to Ayah 33. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, mentioned the different favors on us, mankind and on the uh, animals and other creatures he created subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, now the ayat will go to the day of judgment or the hereafter. So Allah is mentioning here, فَإِذَا means we uh, here may, means but when but when what but when جاءت الصاخة. so here al is means by it is the who knows al -Sakha. what is al means anyone knows al hmm who knows? Ahmed, don't you know what is a sakha? Mm. Evening blast. Deepening blast. What does it mean? Deepening blast. Huh? Yes, this is what you mentioned is right. But what does it mean? Deepening here, deafening, as mentioned in the application, deafening plus. What is deafening plus? Deaf, the word deaf, it means that you can't hear. When I said about someone, he is deaf person, means that he cannot hear properly. So the plus is like 
um, something which is exploded, explosion. So here, this is another, you can, we can say that it is another name of day of judgment. We, we mentioned before that day of judgment in Quran, a lot of name came to, to describe for us the day of judgment. as is one of them. We mentioned before al waqia and al qariya All these are names of the day of judgment. Or Yawm al-Qiyamah. And uh, the importance of such many names that came in Quran, it's not just different names, but it is describing. Every name is describing the, what will happen during this day. When we say as-sakha, as-sakha is means a great explosion that from its high sound and its strong sound, it will make people will not hear. You know, when you when you are in a noisy place and there is a lot of noise, you, you put your hand on your ear and say, oh, I can't hear, I can't hear. Why you say that? Because it's very high sounds, high volume, and you are afraid that you may lose your ability to listen or to become deaf. So Allah described here that during this day, it is a great explosion will happen that people will come deaf at that time. Okay, clear this? Then we have Ayah 34. Allah is mentioning another description of this day, what will happen in this day. So Allah is saying, يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ now, what is the meaning of, of course, uh, the word yawm means that day, here, that, that day, al-mar is a person, the person, that day, the person, yafir, what is yafir, yes, yeah, yes, what does it mean yafir? Hmm. Yes. What is Yafir? Doesn't it mean to flee, like to run away? Excellent. Excellent. So Yafir means that person, every person in that day, what will happen to him? He will run away. Run away. Run away from whom? Min Akhi. What is Akhi? Ya Ruqayya. What is Akhi? Ruqayya. Hmm. Ruqayya is not here. Okay, ya yeah, yeah, yeah. Inji. What is Akhi? His brother. Excellent. So that day the person ran away from Akhi means his brother. His brother. Uh, you know that usually we are very stick to our family. You are very stick, adhere to your brother, sister, mother, and father. So here you will run. People will run from each other. So the first ayah is come, يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِي And then what uh, the second, you, you know here, the ayat is very uh, accurate in um, organizing the, uh, the circle of your relation. The circle of your relation. Usually the person who is married, married and have children. If you are, for example, inshallah, when you grow up, you will marry and you will have your children, your own children. So the, the first circle to your heart or the people who are very close to your heart will be your children. That's why you have to appreciate your moms and dads, how much they are caring about you. So the very close, the first to think about is my children. And then after that, then it comes after that, my, um, my children comes the husband and the wife. The husband is thinking about his wife and the wife is thinking about her husband. This is the second degree of love. The third degree will be for the parents for the mother and father. And the force will be for the brothers and sisters away. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he's taking this type of 
uh, starting with the, the far, the farthest, and then to the near, to your heart. So the, the farthest is the brothers and sisters, and then we'll come after that to al parents here, wa ummihi wa abi, wa ummihi wa abi, means here his father or his mother, and see the mother come first before the father, because the hadith is. Uh, very uh, clear in one of the Sahaba is asking the Prophet who is the, the person that I should adhere to her uh, he said Ummuk your mother since the Sahabi said Summaman and then uh, who after Mama he said your mother again and then the Sahabi said and then after mother the, the third time the uh, Prophet said your mother so he said your mother three times the person that you deserve to be with her as much as you can, your mother, your mother, your mother, in the force, your father. So here you can see how much the attachment to our mothers, his mother and, and what, and his father. So this is the second circle. Then we come to the ayah 36 after Ummihi wa Abi. What will happen? What the next circle, the close circle to him? Wasahibatihi Wasahibatihi Wabani. So this is a very close circle to every man. The, every man, the very close circle to him is the children, or we can make it like that, his. Wife and children. His wife and children. So when you come to a person, to a man, who is married man and has a family, has a wife, you will find that the closest to his heart will be his wife and his children first, followed by parents, followed by brothers and sisters. That's why the ayat is coming to you that he will flee, he will run away from all those relatives, even his own children why he will run away who can tell me why he will run away this is the answer is coming in ayah 37 in ayah 37 Allah is saying So here, Allah is mentioning why those people will run away from the best people to their hearts, to their children, from their children, from their wives. Why they will run away? Because every person here, written here for every person, sorry, for. Every person, written we mentioned Imran person for every person min whom min whom means from them sha'nun something here sha'nun is something yughni yughni means occupying them occupying them they will be busy they will be busy and have something in their mind who can tell me they will be busy with what? The people will be busy with what? The, 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 that person who will run away from his wife, from his children, and from his relatives. He will be busy with what? Who can tell me? Hmm. Who knows? Ah, uh, Elias, you know? Ruqayya, yeah. <laughs> He will be busy with the day of judgment and how um, great is it? And like, he will be scared from like when when all his good deeds and bad deeds will be shown and Excellent. what is going to happen with him. Excellent. So a lot of things, actually. A lot of things that mentioned by uh, our dear Ruqayya. She, the busy, when we are thinking about 
occupying them, what he will be occupied by. So if we're going to say occupying them, and we can make it in points, we can say number one by the horror of, of Day of Judgment. This Day of Judgment will be a, a lot of things will happen. Judgment. How the, the things will be different. How the hellfire will be revealed to the people. And how people are going to be gathered from the beginning of Adam till the end of life. How many billions and billions of people are gathered together. And not only people, there is animals also present. All these people, all these creatures will be gathered. So it is a horror. It's not an easy scene for everyone. This is number one. Number two is accountability. How he will be accountable for his deeds. A lot of bad deeds he did in this dunya, in this life. How Allah will, will uh, forgive him or will punish him. He will, uh, will be thrown to the hellfire or will enter the Jannah. He is now occupied by all this accountability. What will happen to him and his uh, destiny. He is occupied with his Destiny, his final destiny. Where will be the what we call the destination? His final destination. Where will be his final destination? It will be in the hellfire or it will be in the uh, paradise or in Jannah. So you can you can imagine that the person at that day a lot of things in his mind thinking and also he's seeing. So. He will never think at that time of his children or his wife. So this is very important and very uh, yani, uh, beautiful scenes that been mentioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to tell us how much to think about that day now when we are in life. We have to think about that day because the, the only thing that's going to save us is our good deeds and that our ta'a to Allah, obedience. You, this is the only thing to save us from such horror during the day of judgment. Then after that, what will happen after uh, this um, uh, anxiety and a lot of uh, ideas that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us the uh, good feelings and will give us to be more relaxed for the people of the paradise. So describe the people who will enter the paradise. They will be known. They will be known uh, before entering. During this day, the people who enter the paradise will know, will be known. How they will be known by their faces. Their faces will give the uh, glad tiding that they will enter the paradise. How this will happen, Allah is saying in ayah 38. Wujuhun. Yawma'idhin Musfira Musfira So Allah here is Describing the faces of the uh, Of the believers Of the righteous people How it will be It will be Musfira Musfira means that bright Shiny So that day Will, there will be shiny, shiny, bright, bright, what? Bright faces. Wujuhun yawma izim musfira, shiny. You see, when you see someone who is face, you said, oh, he has a bright face. So the believers during the day of judgment will have this bright face. What else? What they will do also? They will be laughing. Laughing. So 39, Allah is saying, Dahikatun, laughing. Dahika, laughing. Dahikatun, mustabshira. Now, what is mustabshira means? Dahika means laughing, but what is mustabshira? Who knows? Mm. 
Musta Bishira. Laughing and Mustabshira means waiting for good news. Waiting for good news. This is Mustabshira. It comes from Bushra. Bushra means glad tidings that someone will tell you about, you are waiting someone to tell you a good news. So this is will be the case of the believers or the righteous people. And on the other hand, Allah is telling us about the disbelievers, what they look like. وَوُجُوهٌ يَوْمَئِذٍ What will happen? عَلَيْهَا غَبَرَ عَلَيْهَا غَبَرَ Then Allah is starts to describe for us the faces of the disbelievers, the faces of disbelievers that they other faces will be what alayha ghabara ghabara what is ghabara it will be means that other faces covered with dust covered with dust you know it's very bad scene um usually it happened for example when you are uh, playing in a garden or doing a, a lot of efforts, physical efforts, and then you will find your face covered with dust, which means that it will be uh, dusty and uh, dirty, not clean. So you have to go to take a shower or a bath in order to make yourself clean. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing that the disbelievers will be at that uh, face that it will be covered with dust. Alayha Gabara and then what else? These faces Tarhakuha Qatara. Here the word Tarhakuha. Who me who knows the means of word Tarhakuha? Tarhakuha. Hmm. Yes, ya Rukaya. Tardness. Tar so yes, it it gives the um the meaning of being um what we call it tired, very tired, and but here tarhakuha means that this tiredness will cover it, cover mm -hmm. it. That the tiredness is covering what tarhakuha qatara. So what is Qatara? Qatara means darkens. So as if they are dusty and dirty and they're looking very tired and with darkens, that this tiredness is covered with darkens. So here Tarhakuha means that the tiredness covering with darkened you can see how how many description here so you can see that description of the faces of the disbeliever is three things dusty tired and tiry here they are tiredness have a severe tiredness with darkness Here, you can see that the ugly, the ugly scene of the faces of the disbelievers, dusty, dark, and tiredness. And actually, the word tarhakuha, giving us the uh, tiredness cover their face. And this is the, describing um, how much they are uh, having bad feelings. It's not only the external it's only the it's also the bad feelings, the tiredness when you are very tired. So when you are very tired, you are very um you, you can't talk, you can't speak, you can't say anything. You just have a very uh, bad feelings at that time. So this is the description of the external appearance 
and the internal also feelings of those disbelievers. And remember on the opposite side, when he spoke about the believers, he said, Dahika. Dahika, they are laughing, the believers. Mustabshira, this is the internal feelings that they are waiting for good news. So for the believers, they have happiness, external and internal happiness. For the disbelievers, they have the external uh, sadness and the internal sadness at the same time. This is a description. Beautiful, huh? Beautiful. So Allah is mentioning those people who have the dust on their face, the ghabara, and tarhaquha qatara with the darkens. Who are those? Why this happened to them? If now someone is saying why this happened to them, why they have this external sadness and internal sadness, Allah is telling you, remember, because of the of what, of what they did in their life. Remember, because they are ula'ika. Ula'ika. Whom? Yani those people who will have this bad external and internal appearance, why it happened, that happened to them? Because ula'ika hum ul kafara. Because they disbelieved in Allah and punished the, the believers, and they are uh, uh, usually opposing, attacking the deen, the religion. And not only kafara, they are not only disbelievers, they are fajara. So here, fajara, what is the meaning of the word fajara? Who can tell me? Fajara. So we can say it in English. These are the ha. Who is no al fajara? Yes, Ruqayya. The transgressor? Uh, al fajara, yes. They are the weak one. The weak one. The weak that they did everything. Everything, not only transgression. Yeah, transgression. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. yes. What you want to say, Elias? Yes. Okay. Can you mute your phone if you are not going to speak? Yeah, Elias, please, just to avoid the service. So Al Kafara Al Fajara means they are these are the weak disbelievers. And the word weak means that they did every uh, sin that you can imagine. Every sin. It's not only one sin or two or three, no. They are disbelievers and they transgressing, they are opposing Islam, attacking Muslims. Every bad thing that they did is called the, comes from the Fujur. Fujur is the, uh, is the origin, the noun, and Fajara is a plural, and the single is Fajr. Also, the plural of, um, uh, of such word came in, uh, of the Fajr, uh, it came also in Quran in uh, um, a word called Al-Fujjar, Al-Fujjar. So Al-Fujjar and Al-Fajara, both of them are the plural of the word Fajr, which is the uh, weak one, the weak one. Okay? Uh, any questions in this ayat? Is it clear for all of us? Okay. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم. سبحانك الله بحمدك لا إله